This video is dedicated to Dr. Mark Cologne, the founder of My Brother's Keeper and one of the founding fathers for National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day. Dr. Cologne's last National Black HIV AIDS Awareness Day event was here in Atlanta. He and I were speaking at Clark Atlanta University. And during our break before our next session, Mark shared with me the history of this HIV observance. When I asked Mark, why was it that I didn't know the story, how black gay men convened in Jackson, Mississippi, strategizing and creating an observance to raise awareness about HIV in black communities. And Mark said to me, the question isn't why you didn't know, but the question is now, what will you do since you do know? And so each embed, I want us to continue to observe and acknowledge that this truly was a for us, by us awareness day. Thank you, Mark, for your service. Rest in love, my friend. We describe a patient, say this is a 31 year old, white, single, gay male. But in our reports, we said nothing whatsoever about race. It really is an omission on our part. The first five patients were white. The next two were black. The six Would we be looking at a different epidemic if the MMWR headline read, seven young African-American and white men? Now, when you look at the AIDS epidemic in America today, AIDS in America today is a black disease. People don't like it when I say that, black folks don't like it when I say that, white folks don't like it when I say that, but here are the statistics. Black folks in America represent roughly 12% of the US population, and yet we represent around 50% of the new HIV AIDS cases in this country. Nearly 50% of people living with HIV and AIDS in this country are black, and nearly 50% of the new HIV AIDS related deaths in this country are black. The most at risk population for HIV on the planet on the planet are not in South Africa or Zimbabwe or Zambia no, or Far East Asia. The most at-risk population on the planet are black gay men in America. Yes, the greatest medical advancement to prevent HIV for all of us. Now, it is for all of us, right? Come on, y'all, talk to me. PrEP is for all of us. I think it is. Um, any final thoughts that you would give to uh, health departments, CDC, uh, healthcare providers, HHS, all of the three letter organizations um, on 
how they can improve prep for women. What 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 message would you give to to this healthcare uh, industry? I feel like they should advertise it more for um, like everybody. From what I've seen from, you know, watching commercials for prep, it just felt like it was more geared towards gay men. Even though it's higher in the gay community, I felt like they just forgot about women. Like women don't have like, um, multiple partners. As I was involved in a relationship with someone who was living with HIV. And um, prior to that, I didn't know that PrEP was, you know, available to me. I always thought it was just for gay men. Um, I didn't know that women could utilize PrEP and everything. We ain't showing that commercial. Just keep it moving. And while daily oral prep was uh, was proven effective with Truvada for women as well as for men, so women already had an option. Um, it was just upsetting as all get out to to have the field be studying new interventions for for prevention only in men um, and, and not in women. It was so intensely disrespectful of the population. And there was a lot of discussion about, well, you know. Let's take another stroll down history lane and see. This video is meant to be a conversation starter from pharmaceutical companies to local coalitions. And the question we should be asking ourselves is have we done right by black communities as it relates to prep? When we know better, we should definitely do better.